Here we're going to go over a left sacral iliac joint injection. Here you can see the needle uh, in the patient on the bottom right corner of the screen. Unfortunately, I was unable to get a good video of the procedure, but uh, this is actually the needle inside the patient during the procedure itself. And above that is an image of the probe in a axial oblique plane. And here I just superimpose it on the needle to get a rough estimate of the orientation during the procedure. Here we're gonna to try to do a fairly detailed anatomical video of some of the anatomy of the posterior aspect of the pelvis with the sacral iliac joint as our focus. Here uh, we basically are seeing the latissimus dorsi muscle which we're making translucent and the gluteus maximus muscles. And now you can see the underlying longissimus thoracis muscle as well as the iliocostalis lumborum muscle. You can also appreciate the various cuneal nerves over the gluteus maximus muscle. Now we're going deeper and you can appreciate the various superficial multifidi muscles uh, over the sacrum and the lower lumbar spine. And now we're going deeper making some of those multifidi muscles translucent. And now we're going a bit deeper and again you can appreciate the layering of these multifidi muscles. Here we're making the gluteal muscles, the gluteus maximus and medius essentially translucent. You can appreciate the various gluteal artery nerve and veins uh, broken up into the inferior and superior gluteal artery nerve and veins. Also you can appreciate the sciatic nerve going distally on the first three sacral roots of the posterior division. Here we are showing the orientation of the probe and the needle essentially during this procedure where the probe is in a axial oblique plane and this is an in-plane approach where we're going from medial to lateral uh, essentially going into the sacral iliac joint again this is lateral to the posterior sacral foramina and here you can see the injectate going into and around the sacral iliac joint here again we're going to go over some cross-sectional anatomy a little bit of a more broad perspective of the sacrum and pelvis here we can see some of the bony structures and again focusing on the sacral iliac joint. Here we're starting our cross section is going through the obturator foramen and the hip joint. Now we're going proximally through the sacrum and the sacral iliac joint itself. You can appreciate again that opening for the posterior sacral foramen. Also appreciate the sacral canal and there is that anterior sacral foramen which you can appreciate here as well. And you can also appreciate the connection between the posterior and anterior sacral foramen. And since this connection is somewhat oblique, it's hard to visualize in its entirety in one cut. Here we're going to focus on sacral iliac joint cross-sectional anatomy. Here we're just delineating some of the structures and we can essentially see the median sacral crest. You can see the posterior sacral foramina and then going lateral you can see the sacral iliac joint itself and now we're doing cross-sectional views cutting through the ilium and the sacrum. Here you can see that posterior sacral foramina opening up you can also appreciate the sacral canal and also the connection between the anterior sacral foramina and the posterior sacral foramina. And here we are cutting back further cephalad and now we're actually into the sacral iliac joint. We don't see the posterior sacral foramen in this view so you just see solid bone going across. And now we're going further cephalad and again you appreciate the posterior sacral foramina and the sacral iliac joint. You can also see the connection between the anterior and posterior foramina. And these connections splay laterally outward, which is why you don't see them fully in one view. And here we're doing some further cross-sectional views going cephalad. Now we're going into the procedure itself. Um, you can see the bony structures on the bottom of the screen. And here are some of the delineations that I made out. You can make out the posterior or sacral foramina. Um, which is labeled number one, and then to the left of that is the actual sacral iliac joint. To the right of the posterior sacral foramina is the medial sacral crest. You can also appreciate the posterior sacral iliac ligament. Here's the needle coming in from the upper right corner. It's at a fairly steep angle, so hard to get a very clear view of it, but here you can appreciate, again, the needle heading towards that sacral iliac joint. Depending on where your probe is, you may or may not catch those posterior sacral foramina. Here it's hard to make out the actual posterior sacral foramen. Here again you can see that needle basically going right towards the edge of the ilium uh, at the articulation with the sacrum. Here you can make out actual the lateral sacral crest in addition to the medial sacral crest. And now we're starting to inject start seeing an echoic material essentially 
filling up that sacral iliac joint space and expanding. And again, here you can see um, the injectate essentially going upwards and downwards into the sacral iliac joint. You do not appreciate a posterior sacral foramen in this view. Um, and here we're continuing with the injection. You can see a blush of air at the end of the procedure there. And here's just some of the injectate overlying the sacral iliac joint. Okay, so we're about 10 days status post to the left sacral iliac joint injection um, using about 3 cc of normal saline and about 20 milligrams of methylprednisolone uh, with ultrasound guidance. Uh, she says she's feeling better. I mean, how much? So when did it kick in, the injection, or? I think the injection kicked in pretty much immediately. Uh, a little even without, bit. Even without the lidocaine, because there was no lidocaine in that. That's right. So it uh, felt better leaving the office. Absolutely. Um, when I got home, I'm like, hmm, I actually felt a little bit better. And then a couple of days later, uh, probably about three, three to four days, it really kicked in. So mo so basically, you're talking about that pain in the left lower back, it just yeah. kind of took care of that. It did. I still have a little bit, nothing, but nothing like it was. It definitely took the edge off and I'm a much happier person. So you're walking better, bending better, sitting better. Yes. You still have the pain going down the leg or no? No. You don't have the pain going down no. the leg. Wow, okay, good to hear, terrific.